What is truly Scandinavian? Get out, please. Absolutely nothing. Nada. Niente. There is no such thing. No such thing. Well, that, believe it or not, is an advert paid for by Scandinavian Airlines. It proved so controversial, the airline had to take it down last week, temporarily. It basically asserts that everything you think of as quintessentially Scandinavian actually derives from other countries, Turkey, Iran, China, America, and so on. Tens of thousands of people gave it the thumbs down and complained that the ad was denigrating their ancestors while pandering to immigrants. SAS pulled the ad and then put it back up, having disabled the comment section. It then claimed the ad had been attacked online by a coordinated right-wing campaign. The plot thickens, doesn't it? Well, we're going to try to unpick that with our guests in a moment from Norway, Denmark and Sweden. But first, a bit more of the ad. What is truly Scandinavian? Get out, please. Absolutely nothing. Nada. Niente. There is no such thing. Everything is copied. Our democracy? Credit goes to Greece. Parental leave. Thank you, Switzerland. The iconic Scandinavian windmills were actually invented in Persia. And we made the German bicycle a staple of our cities. Thank you, Germany! It's Turkish. What? Smapple? Dutch. What about licorice? <laughs> it's Chinese. And Miss so much Dongian. German. <laughs> then it gets worse. Rumor has it the oh-so-Swedish meatballs might not be as Swedish as you think, but Turkish. <gasps> Even the Danish isn't Danish. It's Austrian. And the pride of Norway, the paperclip, was actually invented by an American. And while we're at it... America, thank you for taking the first, first steps, steps in empowering the, the women's, women's rights movement. movement. We're no better than our Viking ancestors. We take everything we like on our trips abroad, adjust it a little bit, and voila! It's a unique Scandinavian thing. And at the time of recording this show, the ad had around 103,000 dislikes to 11,000 likes. So roughly 9 out of 10 people disliked the ad. Now, why has it caused such a stir in the normally chilled-out Scandinavia? Let's bring in our guests to find out. And in Norway, we have the historian Sterla Ellingvag, who is working on a project to trace the DNA ancestry of Vikings and ancient Scandinavians. In Denmark, we have the journalist Tom Carstensen, who has filmed extensively with right-wing groups there. And in Sweden, we have Maha Turki, who's originally from Lebanon, but has been in Sweden for 35 years, and now spends his time helping youngsters to stay out of trouble. Thank you all for joining us on The Nexus, really appreciate it. Um, I want to get your reaction to the ad, first of all, both personally and in the country you're in. Sterla, if I could start with you. Sure, sure. You know, it's, um, uh, I, I found it to be rather silly. And I can understand all the different comments. Um, I didn't get triggered or angry or anything. I feel we stand fairly well with the uh, Scandinavian identity. But it's kind of strange coming from SAS, because this airline just eight years ago, they had uh, It's Scandinavian as their main slogan for several years. So it's something's happened there. Yeah, it was once an attribute and now they're trying to shed it. I agree, I agree. And, and of course, um, uh, they wanted to provoke here a little bit and, and they indeed um, failed miserably when, they, when, when you see all the comments coming from all around the world. Uh, even from many people who have no Scandinavian heritage. I, I've seen those as well. Uh, let's bring in a couple, actually. So we've got um, over a thousand years of history, and you don't think that matters. Our culture doesn't exist only because another group of people move in. Uh, another one says, why do you hate your own people? And one more, they've said, you called an entire people thieves. Sleep well. Uh, Tom, what do you make of it in Denmark? 
Uh, when I saw it, I, I instantly thought, oh, there's going to be a bit of a storm uh, here because people are going to get very angry about this. Uh, I thought it was kind of it was silly. It was used before. I'm thinking kind of uh, it was talking down to people, kind of saying, hey, you guys are nothing really, which is, um, <clears throat> yeah, obviously it's going to make some people angry, of course. So yeah. uh, I wasn't surprised about the, the stuff that happened after. Maha, what about you in Sweden? Actually, I get shocked when I saw it, and I see a lot of uh, reaction from uh, Swedish friends, and uh, it was a little bit funny because it was shocking, and it's true. <laughs> yeah? Um, how do you mean it's true? I mean, <clears throat> it's basically, I don't feel the Swedish people is like Vikings here. Oh, you think they've moved on from, uh, from that and they've, they've moved into a new period of their life? Yeah, I think this, this generation is not like Vikings. Uh, this generation is like, uh, more like, uh, you know, uh, uh, afraid to be, to be someone, to be real. This is my uh, opinion, actually. Stella, what, what do you make of that? Uh, modern Scandinavians are not really attached to their Viking history, and actually this adds more, more representative. Well, um, he should come to Norway. <laughs> we haven't quite gotten <laughs> there yet. Uh, but um, I guess you can split it up a little bit on the percentage-wise. You do have a certain percentage of the Scandinavian populations who are a little bit afraid um, to cherish their heritage and, and to thinking long lines backwards in history. Uh, but where I live, which is not Oslo, but it's on the, in the fjords, there we have uh, long living traditions and, and you gotta be tough to survive there. So uh, we still keep that uh, sort of like Viking mentality as something strong that we use in everyday life. So it depends on where you are in Scandinavia, I guess. You know, SAS's main defense of this advertisement is that it, it meant nothing more than to say Scandinavians like to travel, they like to bring things back, and that enriches their culture. And yet a lot of people aren't buying that explanation. They're saying that it's actually far more political than that. What do you think, Stella? I totally agree. Uh, we all understand the intention, of course. That's not easy to understand if you try. Uh, but it's something provocative here, and they're hiding behind... Um, this main intention they have of, of using ideology and politics uh, in, in a way that's not really appropriate at all. We, we don't appreciate that. If we were to flip the whole situation and uh, an airline in Lebanon, for example, produced an advert like this about uh, Lebanon and the Lebanese culture, what do you think yeah. the reaction would be there? Oh, my God, we have already a reaction and infection in Lebanon, so they re really don't need that point too. There will be a more action. <laughs> more what? More action. <laughs> oh. uh, you, you, you mean there would be like a violent reaction? Oh, my God, yeah. It's going to be like cows. They're already cows. The government, they steal all the country, uh, a lot of mi millions. And now we, we don't need one more problem in the country. Now, you know, there's a range of views here, and especially online. Some people think it was just misunderstood. Others say it was part of a globalist agenda, and others still think that the advertising agency uh, just made a mess of it. Now, we're going to test those theories in a moment, but let's start with the airline's claim that it was subject to a right-wing coordinated attack as opposed to a more organic, genuine reaction. Within hours of being uploaded, the ad received so many dislikes and negative remarks on YouTube that the airline disabled the comment section. And then, as the dislikes continued to rise, it pulled the ad altogether. The following day, SAS stated, It is regrettable that the film is misunderstood. The pattern in the comments section suggests that the campaign was subject to an attack. And that's how it was reported in the worldwide press, the New York Times pointing the finger at right-wingers and nationalists. A Norwegian YouTuber begged to differ. Oh, yes, a cyber attack. No, that's that. No, absolutely. Yeah, no, mm -hmm. Within 24 hours, the airline doubled down, quickly publishing a much shorter version of the ad, editing out some of the more provocative remarks, and again, disabling comments. The airline's other videos were hit with a wave of angry remarks, so the airline disabled the comment sections on all of its YouTube videos. 
Now, we've just been speaking to the head of a PR firm which specialises in social media, and we asked her about the airline's claim that there was some kind of coordinated attack. Here's what she said. What happens with social media and public news that nowadays is actually it's just conversation escalates at a speed of knots. It's really, really fast. And so if somebody has something negative to say, it's not necessarily a cyber attack where you might see hackers and bots and things like that. It's actually just the conversation is shared and key people are talking about it. And so the news gets bigger and wider and broader. Um, and this reached about 20 million people. So it did have legs, but actually it was more of a, a reaction to a, an ad that did not land well, rather than a coordinated campaign or attack by right-wing um, people. Let's go back up to Tom in uh, Denmark. Now, Tom, a lot of people believe the reaction was real and broadly felt, and that the CEO should just come out and either stand behind the ad or apologize. What do you think? Um, I mean, okay. I, I, think the, I don't think it was a, an organized attack. I mean, I'm not a cyber expert, but... Um, I think people were just generally angry about this and went in and disliked it or wrote comments. I mean, these are very, these people on the, what you'd like to call the national conservative right, are very active on, on social media and online in general. So if something comes up, it spreads quickly in Facebook groups and in other various forums and people will then go in and, and come with their comment or do the dislike button or whatever it is and it spreads very very quickly and this is where they can fight their battle so to speak because a lot of these guys have actually also been pulled off a lot of social media so this is one place where they can go in and voice their opinions so, no i don't think it was a an online bot attack from russia well, or something i think it was people just angry now bearing that in mind do you think that the the CEO of uh, SAS Airlines actually owes these people an explanation, if not an apology? I'm, I'm ne I've never been big on demanding apologies, to be honest. I live in Denmark. We had the cartoon crisis, so it's not something that I'm a big <laughs> fan of. But I, I don't even know who he is. I mean, it, it, it's like this big corporate... Well, I, I do know who he is. Uh, get, don't get me wrong. But SAS is this big corporation, and uh, I, don't think, I don't think he's a person that people relate to or think about. And... Uh, I don't know, the handling hasn't been impressive, to be honest. No, they pull it off, they put it back, they, dis they take away the comments. It's just been, yeah, it's not been, it's not been done in an elegant way. But it, I think it's too, too, too late to save it, to be honest. Actually, Stella, that's uh, something I wanted to ask you about. But I have to say, this is definitely genuine, because it's not only online. I've been traveling a lot around in Norway for the past week, and everywhere I come, people talk about this. And they're not really angry, they just think it's really, really silly and unnecessary. And not to say the least, uh, the ad talks about things and not yeah. uh, culture or identity uh, to prove that uh, we don't need to be proud of anything Scandinavian. It's, it's, now, it's just silly. Now, that we're going to come to that a little later in the show. Let's take a look at the Danish agency now that produced this ad. And it's also been keeping a very low profile and said nothing so far about the reaction to its ad. Here's the CEO talking about the importance of social media, though, uh, last year. Making the impossible possible. Yeah. Because, I mean, we have these wonderful platforms that we, uh, we sometimes hate and we some, sometimes uh, uh, we like and hate them, but it gives us a tremendous power of conveying messages on a global scale that we have never been able to, I mean, uh, to do before. Stella, do you recognize that guy? Apparently, you have contacts close to the ad agency. Um, are they quite ideologically driven as well? Yes, unfortunately. Um, I haven't seen the video you showed now, uh, but I, I do have some friends who know him personally, and, and he's quite far, uh, well, political correct, you, you might say. Mm. And, and please remember also that the largest shareholder of SAS is the Swedish government. So, so there are some underlinings here that, that most Scandinavians know about. It's a sort of arrogance combined with a provocation that, that doesn't really fall well at all. Actually, that's a very good point um, about, about who owns the airline. You know, a lot of the angry comments online were echoed by a, a number of Scandinavian politicians. Soren Espersen of the populist right-wing Danish People's Party said he was in shock over the ad and called the government uh, in, in Denmark, which owns 14% of the airline, to intervene. He said, SAS spits on everything that is genuinely Danish. Meanwhile, the Swedish Democrats, um, Richard Jomshoff said on Facebook that the video was really devilish nonsense and self-hatred. 
Uh, Tom, come to you for a moment. Um, have either of the governments, uh, Sweden or Denmark, uh, reacted and said that they would intervene? It's not for the governments to intervene in an advertisement campaign. I don't think so anyway. Soren Esperson is always, I mean, he's, uh, he's it, it's a good, it, basically it's a great thing for him to pick up and go out and it, it'll give him a lot of traction in his uh, camp, so to speak. So he goes out, he, he, he's angry about it, such as his voters are. So it's, a, it's an easy way to just get some, some, some traction and to get some what you call that backwind, so to speak. Um, so, no, but it, but it, I mean, the, the governments in Denmark or Sweden are not going to go in and say you have to change your uh, you mm. change your marketing strategy. That's not their that's not their job. I mean, they're yeah. they're owners of a company, but it, they're not. That, that's not how you do things in Scandinavia. But obviously, it's a good it's a good story for him to, yeah. to latch on to. So I, I know you're in. I know you're in Denmark, but as a neighbour of, of uh, Sweden, you'll, you'll know a bit about the uh, Swedish Democrats. Can you just tell us, yeah. our international viewers, uh, who they are and how important they are in the country? Well, the Sweden, Sweden Democrats are, if you look at their party programme, it's pretty much a copy of the Danish People's Party, which is who Soren Esperson represents. Uh, but they have a back story where some of the members in the beginning came from a pretty bad places like actual Nazi parties, but that has been washed out. They've, they've kicked all them out, is my impression. Mm. But they are very linked ideolog ideologically to, to the Danish People's Party, and they have a massive backing in Sweden. I think the last poll I saw was 28%, but they're not being accepted by the other parties, really. I mean, they've had elections where they had a big percentage, but the rest of the parliament say, we are not going to talk to you, we're not going to negotiate with you, we're basically going to take all these votes, which is... Uh, at one point, I think it was millions, or at least more than a million votes, and we're not going to regard this. So, so they are kind of the black sheep of the family, whereas the Danish People's Party, have always, well, for many, many years, at least 20-something years, have been within the establishment. The Swedish Democrats have not been. What do you make of the Swedish Democrats, Maha? Oh, uh, what a thing. I think they don't have so much knowledge and... Uh, they need more competence. They, they think that the elite of Scandinavia have been too kind to immigrants and have not uh, promoted their own native culture strongly enough. What do you think? Uh, I think they have wrong. I think uh, the Swedish have more culture and uh, better uh, quality of the culture right now and before they didn't have so much, actually. Tom, come in. Yeah, I mean, earlier on, you mentioned something about the Swedes not being very strong in their own identity. They've kind of lost the Viking thing. Um, I think that's exactly the point here, that the, from Denmark, at least, many Danes, uh, all the people that I follow, that I cover, all the national conservatives, they look at Sweden, they see they see weakness. They see people who have lost their identity. Um, I'm not saying they're right, but I'm saying that's how they're perceived. And then you have the Swedish Democrats who actually go out and, and, and want to re-grab this identity. Um, so, so it's, yeah, that's, that's, I think that's how it's perceived by many Danes. A lot of Swedish people think Danish are semi-racist because we didn't take in as many immigrants as uh, Sweden did. And a lot of Danes think that Swedish are a bit naive and took in too many and that the country is not exactly going in the right direction yeah. because of that. Stella, let me read you uh, something from a Swedish politician uh, from around 2002 the kind of thing that, that people uh, that we've just been talking about would, would complain about. This is Mona Salin. She says, I cannot figure out what Swedish culture is. I think that's what makes many Swedes jealous of immigrant groups. You have a culture, an identity, a history, something that brings you together. And what do we have? We have Midsummer's Eve and such silly things. <laughs> yeah, well... <laughs> Where to start? Uh, you know, from time to time, we always have these discussions in the different Scandinavian countries. Uh, there, there was a huge um, cultural battle about this in Denmark, I remember, uh, some years ago. It came uh, also to Norway around uh, 2014. And um, the people on the political left, they tried to focus on things like the, the uh, smaller things that maybe someone invented sometime and and it's not like a paper clip for example um whilst other people want to focus on culture and uh, and you know uh, at the same time people like uh, the person you read from now they like to embrace other cultures 
And, and of course, we should embrace all, all the cultures. I, I love to travel around in the world and see the different cultures and feel their identity. When I'm in Central Asia, I, I, I meet people who have this warrior culture from many thousands of years back, and they remember for such a long time. And it's, it is actually similar. You do find that in Scandinavia sometimes. But, but I guess a lot of people get offended when politicians uh, try to tell us we should care about all the cultures, but not our own. We don't have anything to be proud of. And that's sort of, I guess, the background here, because we've had this culture war, I guess, for about 15, 20 years going on in Scandinavia. Now, Tom and Maha, thank you very much for your contributions to the show. We're going to say goodbye to you now and turn to the more cultural aspects. Um, politics is out the way. Let's focus on some of the things that the Scandinavians are famous for. What is truly Scandinavian? Well, quite a lot, actually. How about the people? The Sami people settled in northern Scandinavia at the beginning of the Iron Age. Over two and a half thousand years ago, and then there's Norse mythology and the Marvel superhero of today, Thor. The mighty god of thunder and his invincible hammer date back 2,000 years and maybe even more. Then there's the Vikings, mighty warriors of the past who smashed their way through Europe and Africa in their famous longboats. They even reached North America five centuries before Columbus and brought us words like egg and knife. And in the modern world, you don't have to look far for iconic Scandi design. Lego? Danish. Milk cartons? Swedish. Cheese slicer? Norwegian. And what about flat packs? Thanks again, Sweden. And no, we would never forget IKEA. And you know what else blew up like dynamite? Which was also a Swedish invention, by the way. ABBA. Thank you for the music, Scandinavia. And thank you for being a leader in all things climate change. I don't want you to be hopeful. I want you to panic. You are even better than your Viking ancestors. Back up to Sterling now. Earlier in the show, you said uh, that people have concentrated on things rather than traits. Uh, what do you mean by that? Well, every time this discussion comes up, this sort of like culture war, uh, where we have a lot of people who try to tell us that there's no need to teach history in Scandinavia before the 18th century, because we have been so much changed. We're not the same people anymore, and we can't really use those uh, lines going back into history. It's very short-sighted, I think. And, and it's a shame, really, because there's so many cultures where you can go hundreds and thousands of years back and you can still see things that are um, part of our legacy, I guess. And we still have that in Scandinavia also, of course. Now, so many people want to emigrate to Scandinavia. Um, you have, in terms of transparency indexes, you know, you, you always perform really well. Uh, the wellness index, happiness index, you know, the Scandinavian countries always rank highly. Tell us about the traits of Scandinavians that make it a society that people want to, to go to and, and envy. Well, yes. Um, you know, the first thing we should discuss are, are, are two things, which, um, you know, the Scandinavian welfare state would never have happened without this sense of equality that is really in our DNA. And, and we all know, even in the Viking age, the Vikings were known for having this sense of equality. When, when Frankish soldiers came and asked to talk to their leaders, they said, you can talk to all of us because we're all leaders. It's a well-known source, for example. And they did have high ethics and morale. Uh, and, and even the women, um, there was this um, um, Moorish traveler who traveled and visited uh, Denmark in the Danish uh, age. Uh, Ibnal uh, Tartushi was his name. And he was amazed at the level of liberty the Viking women enjoyed. And this is, of course, this is something that has been kept, right? So we have a democratic, really strong tradition going 2,000 years back. 
uh, with this thing system. And this was actually something that we exported. The Vikings did export this to Normandy in France and then to England. Uh, so the Manga Carta would never have happened hadn't it been for the Vikings, right? And that's a very important uh, document in, in British law history. Stola Ellenberg, thank you very much for joining us from uh, Oslo. Really appreciate your contributions today on the Nexus and appreciate you watching the program on uh, your phones or at home. Remember, you can see all this and our previous episodes on our YouTube channel. And you can also find a link to the full SAS advert too if you need a bit of context. But for now, goodbye and see you next week.